Welcome you all to this course on uh, electron diffraction and imaging. In today's class, we will start about stereographic projections. In fact, uh, you might have heard of various types of projections which we use to represent uh, figures in crystallography or in every day in the textbook when you look at it various ways in which figures are drawn. Is it just drawn randomly or is there, there is some method in the way in which it has been done? Yes, in fact, there is a method the way in which it has been done. Okay? Before we go into stereographic projections which is used in uh, crystallography and analysis of diffraction patterns, uh, we will talk about what are the different types of projections which are available. One of the projections which we can think of which is used very extensively in engineering is orthogonal projections. In orthogonal projection what we do it is when we look at an object like when we look at this object, what we do essentially is that we draw a plan that is the front view, okay, side view and the top. If all the three are taken okay, and this is a parallel view of the sample essentially if we have a for example, if we have a cube like this is the simplest case which one can think of it could be a cube, it could be a tetragonal any structure. One is a view from this direction, a view from this direction, view from this direction. If you try to draw it this view will look like this, this view will look like this and the other view will also be looking like this straight different ones. So, if these information is there we can put them together and get how the object is. This is what it is being used, what is used in engineering drawing okay, to describe complex machines and this is being used by different people that is somebody uh, makes the drawing and then another person uh, constructs the machine based on the drawing. So, he should be able to understand what it is. Uh, what the person wants it to be done. So, that can be done using this sort of a drawing. Okay. This drawing itself is a parallel view, we can have a different view in which it could be taken. Then there are many ways in which this cube could be that is oblique views also we could take it in this orthogonal projection. Then we look, you might have seen that these are all the various ways in which cubes are represented in textbook each is kind of taking some particular projection into account. What is the other way in which uh, we view it? Normally when we view most of our projections are perspective projections. Okay. When I look at this room, okay, uh, the light rays from various directions okay, are coming onto the my eye. Okay. It is at a particular point it is reaching okay, and the rays which are coming like this same cube it is like viewing it from keeping an eye here okay, and then trying to view it then this is the way the rays will be going. Okay. So, this if you try to look at it how will this room look like. Okay. So, the perspective projection gives not a true representation of that picture. Okay. It essentially gives this is one example which I have taken. This is taken with a camera because camera also when photographs are being taken. Okay. It is nothing but a perspective projection which comes in that picture. Here if you see the region which is close to us, the distance uh, the separation appears to be this height appears to be quite a, this is very tall. Okay. As we go away from the camera, you can see that the height decreases. Okay. Essentially this is moving in this direction. This is essentially because the angle which it substance to our eye or to the camera gradually is changing. So, all the images which we get is essentially related by the angle which it subtends to the uh, imaging system. Okay. This way if you look at two parallel lines like railway track when we take photograph it finally it will appear it is going to join at a particular place. This is what in a perspective view uh, because from here it will be making an angle like this. The one from here if you consider it to the eye the angle which this makes it large, this makes it small. So, still further. So, that is what it decides in fact when an object is very far away okay. like for example, when you look at a plane okay, which is going in that sky after beyond a particular distance we find that it vanishes 
uh, from our eye sight because that angle becomes almost just 0. Okay. This is what a perspective view is and most of the sketches and drawing which we did is essentially of this type. Especially when you look at uh, many of these uh, animated pictures and computers, there they wanted to make it real like. Okay. There the perspective view has to be taken and that is how all the figures are drawn. Stereographic projection what is being done is that we use a perspective view okay, and projection from some regions are being taken into account so that the angular relationship okay, between the different points in that uh, object are being preserved in the two dimensional projection because photograph also when we look at it for example, this is nothing but a two dimensional projection of a three dimensional image. Okay. But when we look at it, the when in our eye gives an impression of that this is a three dimensional one because of the stereographic vision. Okay. Stereographic projection is an another form of a perspective projection where angular relationship in three dimensions uh, in three dimension are represented in two dimensions and in the two dimension that angular relationship is preserved. Okay. What is the layout of this talk essentially will be that I will talk about the basic properties of this projection, the construction of different types of uh, uh, nuts uh, which can be used okay, to get the information about angular uh, relationship between different planes. Okay. Some of the properties of the stereograms will be demonstrated. Then how to construct a stereogram? for a cubic and non-cubic system, this I will talk about it because this is very important in analysis of uh, electron diffraction patterns. Then we have representation of uh, how point group symmetry is represented in stereogram that I will talk about it. Okay. These are all the aspects which will be covered in this lecture. Okay. Some of the applications which one can think of, I mentioned angular relationship between planes and directions in crystals. Okay. Indexing of diffraction patterns correctly, we will be requiring this geographic projection which we will be covering in a separate lecture how to index a diffraction pattern. Okay. In texture analysis because essentially when sample uh, many samples to get you to different shape, we deform it okay. during uh, deformation okay, preferred uh, uh, texture comes in the material preferred orientation of grains occur okay, which is called as a texture and that can also be analyzed and uh, strengthening between phases when we talk about different phases form in a material. Okay. The strength essentially depends upon how different phases are oriented uh, in the crystal uh, in the matrix and what is the uh, number density and the distribution especially that how they are oriented, what is the habit plane all this information we could obtain using stereographic analysis. So, this also I had mentioned all these aspects. Okay. Let us go to what is a stereographic projection. Okay. Stereographic projection is nothing but is a projection of points okay, uh, from the surface of a sphere okay, onto one of the particular uh, one particular plane, it could be an equatorial plane. Okay. In this particular case, it could be an equatorial plane. Okay. What is essentially done is that if we take a three dimensional object. a cube okay. x, y and this z axis. In this the plane normal here will be this one, this is the plane normal. Okay. The plane normal to this particular one will be coming like this, plane normal in one on one direction will be coming like this. So, if you find out angle between the different planes, okay, they are lying in three dimensional space. So, measuring angle between different planes which are lying in different directions in space, it is extremely difficult. Okay. So, if they all can be represented in a two dimensional uh, figure, then it is easy to do this measurement. That is what essentially is done using a stereographic projection. So, what is done in a stereographic projection is essentially is that suppose we keep an object or we draw lines. Okay, uh, from the center of the cube to various points on that sphere. Okay. These lines as you can make out they will be 
cutting the sphere on the surface at some different points. We have taken one such line which is cutting at a point P. Okay. And uh, this sphere we require a reference axis. So, normally we use in uh, geography as we have studied, we use as the earth as uh, a spherical system okay. and we consider the north south uh, poles and east west. Okay. The same concept is being used here. Okay. This is the x axis uh, north south east west and this is x and this is y and this and the z axis is coming perpendicular. We view this uh, pole okay, uh, from the uh, southern pole that is if we keep our eye and view it from here then this is equivalent to the rays from different points on the sphere okay, come and meet our eye. So, for this particular pole the ray comes like this and when it meets during that process it cuts the equatorial plane as a particular point this is represented by small p. Okay. If the angle this p makes with the uh, north south axis is theta okay. from simple geometry one can work out that uh, this angle will be theta by 2 and this distance o p from the center to this one on this equatorial plane it turns out to be r tan theta by 2. Okay. That means that every pole on the surface of the sphere is represented on the equatorial plane okay, uh, by a, a vector okay, r tan theta by 2. So, there is an angular relationship is maintained in this way. Okay. Now, what we have considered here that is all the poles which are there okay, we are viewing it from the south pole then we view from the south pole essentially the poles which are uh, uh, on the uh, northern hemisphere only will be cutting through this uh, equatorial plane whereas, all others will be coming outside of uh, uh, this plane. So, we can have this uh, uh, plane either the equatorial plane or there is an another method in which we can do it is that uh, we can view from this direction okay, and then we can keep a sheet of paper okay, on uh, tangent to it on the other side of it okay. and then the same thing which happens uh, essentially the rays will be coming and for the equatorial plane the rays which are passing through them they will be projecting it and generating a circle this is called as the primitive circle okay. and then this uh, projection p okay, it will be projected onto it. Okay, that is what essentially is being done one section of it which we are trying to do it. Okay, this uh, uh, point P which is on a, uh, the pole on the uh, uh, sphere okay, this is the direction from which we are viewing on the opposite direction we have kept a screen okay, then the projection is essentially going to come here okay, and uh, then uh, if we keep on the equatorial plane. Okay, at uh, this particular plane at the middle then what is going to be this is going to be the projection. But if you consider the angular relationship depend upon what the radius it is going to be this will be that if it is r, r tan theta by 2 here also this will be some r dash tan theta by 2 that is essentially only a slight change in magnification which occurs otherwise the angular relationship is maintained here. Okay. So, there are two ways in which we can view it. Okay for the sphere with a north south axis either we can view from the south pole okay, and get a projection or we can view from this side also okay, perpendicular to it and then uh, get a view of uh, this particular plane, uh, plane that is that these planes normally which are passing through the surface of the spheres okay, and passing through the cutting the center we call them as great circles longitudes or meridians. Okay this is one way and this is the other way in which uh, we can uh, view it. Okay. I just mentioned the term great circle. Okay. What is a great circle? Okay. This is a pole. Okay. This is what we considered. Okay. This pole I had just drawn it lying on some longitude. Okay. Suppose I am keeping a crystal at the center 
there can be some plane okay, which is perpendicular to this uh, uh, pole okay. that is the line joining from the center to this pole. Okay. Uh, I can have many planes at different points okay, perpendicular to it, but if I extend that uh, plane it will come and meet the sphere on some uh, surface. The locus of that point is essentially going to be a circle. Okay. If we draw so many planes like this okay, from one end to the other end, we will find that the plane which is passing through the center okay, that is the one he has got the greatest circumference. Okay. That plane is normally called as the great circle. Okay. This is what essentially in the earth the globe when we draw it the north south all the longitudes are essentially circles on the surface of the sphere passing through the center okay that's what essentially it means so this is called in uh, crystallography or in stereography projection we call them as great circle okay now we look at some of these properties. Okay, we have considered one particular point. Okay, look at its projection. Here, what a projection? What we are doing it is from the uh, south pole. We are looking at a projection. Okay, there's one point is there. There are many points can be there on the surface of the sphere, and all of them. Okay, if you look at make an equal angle with respect to the uh, north south axis. Okay, if that is the case, uh, the locus joining all these points is going to be a circle on the surface of the sphere concentric with the equatorial plane. Okay. These circles we call them as latitudes okay, in geography and these uh, latitudes are parallel to uh, equatorial plane, but if you look at their diameters the diameter is going to be smaller. Okay. This has got the maximum diameter equivalent to that of that sphere. Now, if we look at the projection of it onto the equatorial plane, the projection is essentially going to be a circle. Okay. That is for all the latitudes, if we take a perspective view projection from the south pole on the equatorial plane or if we keep a uh, sheet here it does not matter now which plane we consider it here also it is going to be essentially a circle that is only in this projection that is in stereographic projection what we have done is essentially the various points on the surface of a sphere are projected onto an equatorial plane and that projection if you look at it retains that shape that means a circle on the surface of that sphere looks like a circle here. Okay. Now, let us look at a plane here, okay, the north south east axis plane when we look from here, okay, how will it uh, uh, look like in this equatorial plane. Now, you can make out that the rays which are coming from the different points on the northern hemisphere that is cutting it at some different points and the locus will turn out to be in this particular case is a line. Similarly, we can look at this great circle which is lying on the uh, screen okay on the then here again if you look at the projections line yeah this is essentially a line okay just let me see from here this is a line okay this projection if you consider it okay all the lines which are going to come from here like this, this way they will be coming from here that will give rise to this particular line that is right. Okay. That is what essentially is being shown in the, the projection of the equatorial plane which is being shown. Now, we can see that all the latitudes come as concentric circles, all the uh, longitudes come as uh, diameters okay, which are passing through the center. Okay. And if we view from the southern hemisphere that is from the south pole, we essentially get only the information on the northern hemisphere which is coming into this picture. Okay. And another is that uh, from here to here the uh, 
away from this that is closer towards the equator when we comes okay different latitudes okay which have got ang uh, where the angle of the, the latitude makes with the equator is very small okay the angular separation is large this is because of the fact that it is r tan theta by 2 the factor which comes into the picture okay the take a uh, sphere like this okay we have different latitudes and longitudes okay which are marked every 1 or 2 degrees okay the globe and we look at the projection from the south pole then what we will be getting it is concentric circles like this in this particular case it is every, every 2 degree okay and uh, then all these diameters which you look at it the angular separation between them is every uh, uh, 2 degree. So, this is a sort of a calibration uh, plot which is available which can be used to measure angle between different points okay and uh, uh, if you look here. Uh, the area wise if you see it this looks as if it is a uh, 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 larger area, but angular separation if you look at it here as well as here the angular se separation is that same. So, essentially the angles are preserved, but if you look at that actual area, area is not preserved, but on the surface of the sphere if you look at it angles having that same area will have uh, angles describing the same area on this polar projection will have the same surface area on the surface of the sphere ok. Suppose we wanted to measure angle between two different points ok. Then what is going to happen uh, here is that it is not a very convenient method by which it could be done ok. For which and another type of projection we said that from any direction we can have the projection instead of the uh, north pole ok there is an another projection which is being used and there uh, it is easier to get information. Here essentially I am showing a polar projection of the earth uh, which is uh, shown this is of the northern hemisphere ok and uh, the areas here that is angular area if you consider between the between different angles if you consider ok angular area and here angular area will be the same, but it looks the figure that actually this area is large. So, this is not true ok. What are the other properties? Suppose it is not a circle which is concentric with the north pole ok. Even when we view from the south pole ok around a point there is a locus there is a circle is there on the surface of the uh, sphere. This circle when we look at the projection that will always turn out to be a circle in the equatorial plane projection ok. That is an important aspect of stereographic projection. In all other projections the circle on this shape if you take a parallel projection that will uh, be projected as an ellipse ok. Here the uh, projection retains that uh, shape. Earlier what we did is this is now we will talk about uh, polar projection we have talked we have talked about another projection which is called as a wolf net ok. In the polar projection point we viewed from the uh, south pole these are all the uh, 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 longitudes ok. When we viewed from here how we got it and instead of viewing it from here we can keep an eye here and view it from this. So, we are essentially using uh, a great circle or a projection plane ok which are perpendicular to this equatorial plane ok. This plane ok if we look at it this is how it will be in the projection plane it will appear east, west, north, south ok and the projection of uh, this plane will appear as the equatorial plane projection will appear as an east to west equatorial line ok. The, uh, the other one uh, this projection not one ok that is the projection of this circle itself will appear as north along the north south axis projection. So, if any point on this uh, projection plane ok if we consider it ok all of them will be uh, the rays will be coming from this point. this is a three dimensional projection which we are showing it ok each of this point how will it appear on the projection this is how they will be appearing and they will be all lying on the uh, this circle this circle we call it as the primitive circle as I had explained earlier ok and equal angle 
okay, on the surface of the sphere will appear as equal angle on uh, the uh, primitive circle. Okay, this is something that means that uh, this can be uh, graduated okay, here a point if you consider two points it makes some angle okay, and this distance also if you look at it, it will correspond to the same distance which the arc makes it on the surface of the sphere. Now suppose we view uh, only this equatorial plane how it will appear the equatorial plane will appear as line but what is essentially important is that different points on that equatorial plane if you look at it okay the same having that same arc the distance which is going to be there depending upon where from we are measuring it okay with respect to the center if you consider it the distances are going to be r tan theta by 2 that is on the circumstance they are equal angle here when you go on different uh, angle away from the center okay then the angle is going to be given by the distances are going to be given by r tan theta by 2 this is what one should uh, remember okay similarly the projection of the great circle lying on that plane if you look at it on this projection plane here again the various points uh, which uh, have that same angle when we try to look at it the separation if you try to see it that will be gradually increasing as we go away from it okay now what we have considering it is projection of so far what you have considered the three planes equatorial plane okay the plane of projection and the uh, another great circle which is uh, lying on the screen these are the three projections which we have considered on the uh, this plane of projection suppose we have a longitude like this which is lying there okay and this longitude meets the equatorial plane at this particular point making an angle theta with respect to this axis okay then okay how will this uh, plane be projected this is only one part of it which we are seeing it the other part of it will be coming on the other side of the uh, sphere okay this projection if we try to uh, look at it this angle since we know it is going to be theta okay what is the point at which it should come that will be given by r tan theta 2 uh, tan theta by 2 okay that is what essentially this distance which is going to be there okay and as i mentioned all the circles on the uh, that is all the great circles or smaller circles on the surface of the sphere on the projection plane they have to they appear as only the circle okay that is what essentially but the radius could be larger or smaller but the shape is being retained. Uh, this is what it happens in the stereographic projection. If you remember that now we can see that this circle also has to be projected okay, as a circle. Okay. Only thing which will happen is that part of the circle which is there in the northern hemisphere is within this projection plane. The other part of it outside in the projection plane that is where is it is outside of the primitive circle okay if you want uh, this projection if you look at it this is like a perspective view we have just seen that logically we try to understand this is how it will appear but when we have to construct a uh, uh, calibration net okay we cannot uh, take photograph and go about and do it. So, we, there should be a method to calculate it for which what we can do it is that from here if we know what is the angle which it makes from this particular one every angle which it makes okay. The distance at which the point will appear on the projection is given by r tan theta by 2 that information is there okay and it has to be an arc uh, which has to cut okay. So, if that is the case this distance is always the chord length is always going to be r okay only this distance is going to vary depending upon that angle okay now we can using this simple formula okay we can find out what is going to be if this chord length we know and from here to here this length is uh, r minus s now we can immediately find out what is going to be the radius okay then from this particular point okay we can uh, measure a distance and find out where this radius of the circle will be okay with this as the center on this primitive we can draw a circle okay the part which is lying within this okay this is the projection 
of this longitude onto this projection plane. Okay. Uh, so, what we considered was essentially with respect to a longitude. Let us take the case of a latitude. In the case of a latitude also, okay, this is also a circle on the surface of the sphere. So, the projection plane it has to be some arc of a circle which it has to come. Okay. That is what we are showing it from the uh, perspective being. This is how it is going to be in the projection plane. Okay. That is what is being, but this is essentially the way we view it. Okay. But if we have to generate it, okay, then what we have to do essentially is that what is the angle which they make as I mentioned earlier, okay, then we can do that and then we can find out depending upon that angle at what position okay, if th that is from with respect to a center if we take it, okay, this is making a particular angle theta with respect to this, then we can it will be cutting the uh, primitive at this particular point, draw a tangent to it, okay. the tangent will be meeting uh, this north south axis at different places depending upon suppose I draw a tangent here, it will be meeting at some and this is going to be the uh, radius okay. from, he, from here to here this distance is the radius. You measure this radius and draw different circles, the arc which is cutting within that is essentially going to be the projection of the latitudes. Okay. This we can do it for every degree or every 1 degree or every 2 degree and generate a calibration chart. Okay. That is what essentially is uh, shown here. Okay. This is called as the wolf net. Okay. Here this is the projection of all the uh, longitudes okay, at uh, different uh, angles okay, uh, from the equator. Okay which are meeting on the equator at some different angles and that you can make out that these are all arcs of some circle okay. and that then all the latitudes are also arcs of some circle this is how it appears. Okay. We can calibrate this because this angle can be calibrated from 0 to 90 okay. from here also 0 to 90 degree here as well as here and here also it is being calibrated that angle 0 to 90 degree. If you look here the angular separation remains that same, but if you go from here to the center the angular separation decreases okay, as I had mentioned earlier. This wolf net is the one which is used okay, as a calibration uh, net okay, to do various uh, analysis of the results which you have obtained in TEM. Okay. But what we will talk about it is uh, first how to use this. Okay. So, the normal projection of the earth which we see is nothing but a stereographic projection. This is how we have studied in uh, fourth standard or fifth standard how the uh, earth looks like. Okay. And in this particular one case it is a 2 degree resolution. Okay. There are many uh, stereographic uh, wolf nets are available with 18 uh, centimeter length. Okay. They give and 1 degree resolution. Using this generally the angular uh, measurements could be carried out with an accuracy of about 2 to 3 degrees. If you wanted an accuracy better than this we have to do exact computations. Okay. Let us take some examples how to use this to measure some angles. Okay. The cases which we will consider one is measurement of angle between points on the stereogram. Okay, that is one. Another is construction of stereogram for different crystal structures. Okay, this is very important. Okay, this aspect I will discuss it. And uh, as I mentioned point group symmetry is also represented in uh, using stereographic projection. This also how it is done. We will talk about only just three. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is the first step which we have to do? Okay. On the stereographic uh, uh, net, wolf net which is available keep a tracing paper, okay. draw the primitive circle and also draw the uh, east west axis and the north south axis okay. so that we have a reference axis which are there. Okay. Generally as a convention if you follow from here to here this is used as x axis, this is as the y axis, z axis is the one which is coming from this particular point. Okay. Then what we do it is that 
if you wanted to do any measurements there. This wolf net is kept constant, we pin them together at the center and by rotating uh, this uh, tracing sheet we can whatever the operations which we wanted to do so that all the angular relationships could be measured that is what exactly is done in a geographic projection. Okay. Now, uh, what I had done is I had just removed the wolf net. So, this is how it appears. Okay. Let us take one example. Okay. We want uh, a point is there on the surface, this is a pole okay, on the surface of the sphere. On the same latitude, it is rotated okay, 50 degrees from west to east. So, from this point, it is rotated and it is coming here. Okay. So, generally if they are lying on that same latitude, if we measure the angle directly on this latitude, that gives what is it going to be the angle. Okay. So, essentially what you have to do it is on the same latitude which we uh, move, measure 50 degrees and mark, this is going to be the new point. Okay. Another is uh, an example which I am showing it with the sphere itself. Okay. On this latitude, it is being moved 35 degrees from a point 1. Okay and it is to reach a point, but if you look at it after some angle of movement, okay, it is coming on to the southern hemisphere. Okay. When it comes on to the southern hemisphere, what is essentially is going to take place is that uh, the points which are going to there and this if you take a perspective view of it, okay, they will not be uh, coming within this primitive uh, circle. Okay. That is exactly what happens here. Okay. As I mentioned, when they are on the same latitude, in the stereographic projection also we have to move on that latitude. Okay. That is what essentially is being made. Okay. Here it is about 25 degrees. Then the other 10 degrees when it has to move, it is going to be outside of this or on the other side of that sphere which is going to be there. That uh, how exactly we can represent it is, is that we have uh, seen with the eye from this side. Suppose we keep the eye from here and try to look at it. Then what it will happen that is all the points which are going to be there on the other side, the side this uh, part of the hemisphere that is the left side of the hemisphere, they will all be getting uh, projected onto this point. Okay. But since the coordinate system is fixed, if we uh, make the correction for it, then what it will appear is that equivalent latitude on the other side, we have to move another 10 degree and reach. So, this is how the rotation will be. Uh, affected. Okay. This is one important thing which you should always remember that uh, uh, whatever is the moment which is within this which is easy when it is uh, going out of it and that angle is larger angle rotation has to be done then it is not projected on this side. Okay. It will be coming on to the other half of it this is how this projection will be. And here what I can on the globe itself or uh, that sphere there are some poles are lying, okay. one pole here, another pole, another one, another one, these poles. If you look at it, these poles are lying on the same uh, latitude, this also these two, these are lying on the same longitude, this also lying on the same longitude. How it will appear on the stereographic projection? In the stereographic projection, okay, one is appearing it like this. Okay that is from here to here. Okay. I think uh, there is a mistake is there. Okay. This which is going to be there on the surface should appear somewhere here from this. Okay. This projection is appearing it in this way. Okay. The one which is lying on the latitude, this is the way it will appear with that maintaining that same angle. Okay. The one which is lying like this on the equator, that is essentially going to be the uh, projection is nothing but from here to here on the plane uh, that is the great circle which is lying on this uh, screen. Okay. So, the direct measurements are easy when they are lying on a latitude or on a longitude. Okay. Angular measurements can be measured very easily that is very important. Now, let us look at a case where there is one point here okay, above this latitude another point below this latitude, there is a third point somewhere else, okay. there is an another point which is somewhere else on the sphere. So, various points are there. These points okay, 
if you try to represent it under the two dimensional projection this is how it appears that is one by uh, the pole 1 is here pole 2 is here 3 is here we wanted to find out angle between all these poles how do we go about to do that we keep this on top of a uh, wolf net okay then if now we try to see it 1 and 2 is not uh, lying on a lot, uh, longitude or a latitude 1 and 5 they are not lying nor 2 and 5 nor 1 and 3 only 3 and 4 is lying on a longitude okay then what we do is that suppose we take the case angle between poles 1 and 2 we wanted to do it then what we do it is okay this superimposed one now we rotate this okay at the center by a small angle when we rotate it slightly rotated then you find that 1 and 2 are coming on the same latitude now we can measure that angle between these two points okay and this angle turns out to be uh, 91 degrees okay between 1 and 2 now in this case we wanted to measure angle between 3 and 4 the 3 and 4 if it's, since they are lying on the same uh, longitude we can measure this angle directly keeping it in that same position no rotation is required that angle turns out to be 56 degree okay suppose between angle 1 and 5 okay if you wanted to measure it what we have to do it now we have to rotate this uh, tracing sheet okay around that center that is essentially what is being done okay the axis has been rotated so that 1 and 5 that is you rotate it like this in this way okay so that this axis comes here and this axis comes that's what essentially it is being done 1 and 5 is lying on the same latitude now we can measure that angle separation from here to here if you measure this turns out to be 86 degree this is how we have to find out angle between different points on the uh, surface of a sphere okay uh, in two dimensions in using a stereographic net we can measure it here what we had angle between 1 and 3 the same way rotation has to be done so that these two lie on a latitude or a longitude okay here when it has been rotated it is lying on a longitude and then this angle is being measured okay this angle in this case turns out to be 32 degree so with these various examples what i have tried to demonstrate is that how to use stereograms to find out angle between different points which are lying on the surface of the different uh, poles which are lying on the uh, uh, stereographic projection Okay, this is an another case where what we are considering it is there is one pole and when we wanted to measure between uh, two points what we did is we rotated with respect to the center. Now I wanted to rotate this pole around an another pole which is not lying at the center then what will we do okay this is what it is rotate pole 1 okay around 5 uh, uh, around pole 5 by 10 degrees clockwise we have to rotate it okay for that the methodology which has to be done is that first keep this on to the uh, stereogram okay in this particular case the pole 5 is lying on the equatorial plane okay then what we do it is we rotate this pole first okay then it will be coming here so when we rotate this pole okay this also will automatically get rotated okay so that's what it uh, this rotation essentially requires if we measure it it's about 12 degrees so 12 degrees if we rotate it and bring it to the center on this latitude it will also be rotated 12 degrees and brought it to this point these new positions are essentially this new position okay once now this pole has been brought to the center and uh, one has been moved here now since it is at the center coinciding with the wolf net now we can make a rotation of the uh, uh, around this uh, pole by just rotating this tracing sheet by 10 degrees then it will be moved from here to here 
that is what essentially is being done 10 degrees we have rotated this is the point which it comes okay and when this has reached here but actually the rotation is affected from the point now after it has been reached now what we do it is now we go back to original position the move it from here to here 5 back then this will has to move along this latitude from here some distance and reach a new position this new position is what these are the position 1 to 1 dash to 1 2 dash and the final position is and this comes back to the original position so effectively these are all intermediate positions that is how when we rotated one around 5 in a clockwise by 10 degrees the new position is from here to here but the steps which are involved as I had explained here is to go from here to here and move this from here to here then affect the rotation around this by making 10 degrees and then move this point back to 5 and then this will reach here okay this is an another example which I have taken from the literature where what happens is that uh, the pole A is being rotated around pole B but this B is not lying on uh, the equatorial plane or on the north axis in this case what has to be done is first we have to rotate this tracing sheet so that the B is going to lie on the uh, east west axis with respect to the stereogram that is what it is being done then measure this angle then this is being rotated from here to this position and then what happens A moves from here by the same angle it is rotated here and then from here the clockwise 40 degree here a rotation which is being given okay to the new point and then move B from here to the original position and then this will be moved from here to this particular position okay essentially now we can make out that and now we rotate it back to a position then you know that from here to here this is the position the new position which is going to occupy okay this is how quite often when we do uh, analysis of diffraction patterns and wanted to find out habit plane and orientation relationships. This sort of uh, uh, operations have to be performed. What essentially I am trying to show in this uh, lecture are some of the examples which I have taken is what are the basic operations which has to be done on a, a stereographic projection and one should be quite familiar with this sort of operations. Okay, that is the most important thing and another example which I am taking it is locus of all points which are 10 degrees around this particular pole which we have to find out one okay. how do we go about it okay. for all these points first thing which has to be we have to rotate the tracing sheet so that this is going to lie on the east west axis okay. that rotation when it is being done performed this is the step one so that is being done now we can see that it is lying on that east west axis okay now what we have to do 10 degrees we have to find so on to the left as well as the right measure 10 degrees mark two points okay after marking those two points find out the uh, actual distance and find out the midpoint of it using that uh, this is the diameter okay uh, draw a circle around that center point which you have defined okay and this is what essentially the locus of all the points which are going to be there okay now what we do it is that this we have done it the original position of this uh, uh, tracing sheet was essentially it has to be now we can rotate it back okay when we do this now we can see that this uh, the uh, circumference okay shows the locus of all points which are 10 degrees from one. what essentially it means that if you look here on this projection it may not appear so but actually this what it means is that on the circumference on the surface of the sphere okay from this particular point okay all points which make an angle of 10 degrees that is what it has been that projection is what is being shown here <coughs> okay this is an another case where we have considered it is that in the case which we have considered earlier okay the locus is all lying within the uh, primitive itself a case which can happen is that part of the locus is not lying within the 
wet circle how it will come that projection as we have discussed earlier okay that will essentially be coming on the opposite side okay for this particular point whatever is going on that opposite side that has to come here this particular point which has because as I had shown uh, when on a latitude we move okay we are reaching a point and uh, beyond that a rotation has to take place then it will be coming on that opposite side that is precisely what is shown here okay. Another is to find the pole of a great circle to draw a great circle through two poles to find the opposite of a pole okay. These are two points which are there okay on the uh, uh, stereogram and we wanted to find out a uh, great circle which is passing through this point okay. For which what we have to do it is keep the uh, wolf net okay keep the stereogram on top of the wolf net okay these points are not touching each other uh, not lying on a latitude or longitude then what we do it is we rotate the tracing sheet so that these two points are lying on a uh, longitude and then if we draw the this is the great circle which is passing through this if you draw this line this is what essentially is the great circle which is passing through these two points okay this is how it can be drawn okay this is a great circle which is being given okay we have to find out a pole corresponding to the great circle what uh, doing it here essentially is that keeping a wolf net at the keeping the tracing sheet on top of a wolf net okay and uh, then measure an angle which is 90 degree on the equatorial plane and mark that point. So, this point is essentially 90 degree away from all the points on this uh, longitude or this great circle ok. Similar way if you have to draw a latitude ok, uh, uh, if you have to draw a longitude corresponding to a particular pole this is a three dimensional figure which I am showing it here if this is the pole ok the great circle uh, uh, is the one which is passing through the center of that sphere ok and lying on the uh, 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 surface of the sphere ok. And uh, the projection of it if you try to see it this is how the projection of this uh, point looks like for this uh, particular point which is lying on the stereographic projection ok we wanted to draw a great circle corresponding to it how exactly it is being done that one now we keep it on top of the wolf net ok then the tracing sheet we rotate it so that this pole is lying on the equatorial plane and then when it is lying on the equatorial plane from here measure an angle which is 90 degree ok then draw the great circle which passes through this this is what is shown with this uh, red line ok this is the uh, great circle which is 90 degree away from this pole ok and then rotate it back to the original position. So, with respect to a original position the stereographic projection where the axis are marked ok this is what the great circle corresponding to a pole ok. Another factor also which we have to consider is to find the opposite of a pole suppose there is a pole which is there 180 degree rotation if you see it if this is going to be there this comes and on that opposite there will be a pole which will be there which is essentially a line passing through the center where it cuts this that is what that opposite of that pole. And this projection if you see it on this uh, hemisphere uh, the pole which is lying on the uh, right hemisphere it is going to be here ok that is what essentially is being marked. To find out the pole which is going to be there on the opposite side as I mentioned earlier what we have to do is that the viewing direction you change from the right left side to the right side then the projection of this pole is going to come here ok on the equatorial plane that is what essentially is being done. To do that what you do it is you keep the stereographic projection on top of the wolf net and then rotate this and bring it here ok measure what is the angle which is here from the center 
and the same angle you measure it and uh, mark that point. Okay. Since this is on that opposite side of it, if this is used with a close circle to represent points which are all from the right hemisphere which is projected for the left hem hemisphere, we use an open circle. So, this way this shows the projection of the pole which is going to be on that opposite side. Okay. Now, if we rotate it back, we will be getting this pole. Okay. Now, we have rotated it. Now, you know that this is the uh, pole which is corresponding to our the uh, this is the uh, pole on the stereographic projection for a pole on the northern hemisphere on the right hemisphere and on the opposite pole this is exactly how it will be represented. Okay. Now, uh, I will uh, stop here we will take the case of construction of a stereogram for different crystals okay, and uh, point group representation in the next class we will stop here.